Hello everybody and welcome back. This is part 10 of our Trumpeter 1200 scale HMS hood build. In this video we'll be fitting the conning tower platform and doing the next stage of detailing on top of that. So we'll do that first of all. The next stage is to start to build the Admiral's Bridge which goes on top of the conning tower platform and that's mainly uh, an etched brass construction from the uh, Pontos kit. So we'll be doing that back over at the bench. This is the conning tower platform ready to fit onto the ship now. Um, I'm just going to add the deck houses uh, before I do and this water tank that needs to go on the back here. The actual viewing slits on the conning tower assembly I've just painted in with some gloss black paint. Uh, I did debate about putting some uh, crystal clear in here but I just didn't think it would fit into these slots very well. Uh, so I just painted them gloss black to give the impression of uh, some reflection in there and I think they've come out okay. I've done the same for this section on top here. So I think that'll look okay when it's all together. I've also assembled the uh, one of the directors for the 15 inch uh, main armament here which sits on top of the conning tower and that includes some fairly complicated etched brass work these ladders up the back have to curve around the back of the director arm here and there's a couple of very tiny grab rails at the front. Pontos provide a small template to drill the holes for that. Um, I just used the front two holes and drilled those out with a 0.3 millimeter drill bit and when I cut the grab handles off I actually left quite a bit of the joining stub on the forward part of the grab handle to go down into the hole that I'd made. And I cut the rear part of the handle off flush so that it just sits on top without any glue. And that's come out pretty well. There's a hatch here as well and uh, some sort of extension. I'm not sure what that is, whether it's part of the periscope arrangement as well and Pontos provide some of the actual lens uh, screens here on either end of the tower and I selected the closed ones they also provide an open option as well but uh, they're going to be closed on mine so that's all ready to fit I'm just going to start by uh, fitting these deck houses this is the captain's sea cabin and as we did down on the uh, Admiral Signals platform, I'm just going to put a drop of glue into the corners of these houses. And that hopefully will avoid any glue dripping down onto the deck when I come to install it. So again, this needs to be orientated the correct way. The doors go to the back of this part. I'll just let this glue set up. I've used some thick super glue on this, so it needs a few more seconds just to bed down. Now the small toilet block. Set up. I'll put the uh, aerial mast on as well. I'm 
and I can fit this uh, water tank to the back here. Just put a tiny spot of glue on the deck. It's a tight fit, can't get the tweezers in. That's the water tank on. I've previously fitted these ladders uh, on the front which access the conning tower roof. I'll put this part of the upper conning tower on now and that's got a location peg at the front and I'm just going to put a couple of spots of glue round the edge. That should be enough. And the rangefinder sits on top of the conning tower assembly like that. But I'm not going to glue that in place just at the minute because there's a couple of arms to fit underneath. So I'll come back to that. So I've gone to the next stage of detailing now uh, on the signals platform. So I've added the rear railing here and the ladders down to the uh, shelter deck at the back and also the ones dropping down into the internals that uh, I did earlier on uh, in the build. So that's now ready for the conning tower platform to be fitted on top. Then I'll finish off adding the signals lights, uh, the hacks directors which go here and there are some signalman's shelters to fit between the hacks bases and the uh, accommodation here. So we'll fit the conning tower platform then we can finish off on the signals platform get the signals lockers in and then that'll be completely finished. So we'll get the platform on now Just need to hold that down for a few seconds until the medium super glue that I've used dries. So you'll notice that before I put the platform on, I've fitted the railing around the back here. And that's because it's a very complicated shape, it's got lots of bends on it. And I just wanted to give myself the space of being able to do that off the ship. So that was the last piece of detailing that I fitted to the conning tower platform before we've just glued it down there. So let's get the last of the details on the signals platform finished and I want to do these signalman shelters and they lie between the hex director and the accommodation which was underneath the uh, conning tower platform here. Uh, and their parts 257 and 256, they are handed uh, port and starboard. So we've got a fret here that's uh, fret 3 that's fast disappearing. So obviously, the uh, details on the outside, there's a door already etched into the part. There's a very slight angle uh, on the shelter 
which I want to just make first and it's this part here I've just gone a bit too far there when you put the roof on it's uh, just a bit too much but we can go back As we've done before, I'm just going to reinforce these angles with some plastic rod or plastic strip. So that just provides enough strength to hold those two sides together. It's much better than just relying on a very fine connection point there between the uh, two angles. Doesn't have to be a big part. That's, that's, so I've cut that a bit too long. That also allows us to push the part down and make sure that uh, it's a 90 degrees. So I've just got those pieces of plastic there which make that corner joint very strong. And it also makes sure that by pressing down with the plastic in place that you get the uh, corner exactly right there. So I'll just bend the rear wall down. And I'm just going to do the same with that last connection there. And I'll just slide a piece uh, of this strip inside the shelter so that's the completed shelter that's a pretty strong assembly now with all those uh, connecting pieces of uh, strip inside. So two of those to make up. Here are the two shelters made up now and I realised that I'd made a mistake actually. I'd folded this top part down onto the inside there just now. And it wasn't until I looked again at the uh, photograph here in the Pontos instructions that I realised that it had to go over onto the top there. Quite why that's uh, the case I'm not sure but I'm just uh, following the instructions so I just broke that piece off and folded it back over. So they're ready for primer uh, and then we can go over and get them on the ship with the hex directors which are these pillars here. Got the parts here for the hacks directors. Uh, for those of you that were wondering what hacks means, it's high angled control system. It was basically the range finders for the anti aircraft guns. Uh, the hood secondary armament, the four inch mountings, were high angle guns used for anti aircraft defence and these were the directors that uh, controlled those. This is the trumpeter hacks director 
which it replaces and you can see the difference is quite significant really the shape's completely different and uh, the trumpeter kit has what appears to be a canvas or tarpaulin on top of the area where the crew sat inside the rangefinder. Uh, the Pontos parts have got the open arrangement and the sights that go inside uh, which are these etched brass parts here. So we'll make two of these up, I don't need all three just now. So I'm going to make two of them and we'll do a comparison with the trumpeter parts when, uh, when they're finished. Let's do this director now. The first thing I'm going to do is fit the pivot onto the bottom. And then I'll fit that to the pedestal. That'll just give me something to hold on to. It doesn't matter which direction these go as long as the uh, director sits square on top of the pedestal. So I've got a handle there and although I've painted this it doesn't matter I'll just re-coat it when I come to do the rest of the director. Then we have some boxes that go underneath. There's some sort of equipment in them I don't know what they were. I'm just going to take a fraction off the back of that, it's not sitting properly. So we've just a chance to fix that before we struggle with it. That's better, it's just given me... It's just given me the space I need to get that part on nice and straight. And then we have another fitting on the side here. On the first one of these I made I actually put the resin parts on first and found that they were interfering with the proper fitting of the pedestal so if you're doing this yourself I'd recommend that you do it this way and fit the Fit the pedestal and then you can see what you've got to work with. I'll uh, do the sights next. There's two parts to that. There's this brass piece which needs to be folded. It's very very tiny. You need to fold up a box at the back which folds over itself. Difficult to hold. I'm not going to glue that. That's fine as it is. And then we have uh, the arms at the side which just come up through 90 degrees. about right. Really are minuscule some of these parts. The sight base fits just inside here.
And these are the, they look actually like uh, binoculars. Uh, and these just need folding up. They're obviously very two dimensional, but they look okay in profile. They just fold up like that. I can straighten these out to the absolutely correct position once I've glued them in place. So I'm not going to fuss too much about them. And they go on top of the mounting like that. It's easier said than done. I just want those angled up slightly. And I'll set that with a bit of accelerator. And I can just then adjust the sights to get them nice and straight. There we are, I'm happy with those. Let's get the director arms on. I've had a bit of a gaff with this one. I've um, cut the pin off, or it snapped off. But uh, as I said, resin is very easily glued using super glue, so I should be able to get a good bond with it. And these parts are going straight on the bridge, so they're not going to be lying around to get damaged. Good, they've come out pretty well. I'm happy with those. And you can see there's quite a big difference between the Pontos resin parts and the trumpeter supplied bits here. So there are our two hex directors, or at least the forward ones. There's one to go, another one to build to go on the back of the ship. And I've primed the hex directors there. And that's one of the directors painted. So that's ready to go on the ship. I'm going to finish off the flag lockers now. And we need to cut out these printed flags. You might remember in part 9 of this video series we left the bottom open on the flag lockers here so that we could push these printed flags up uh, underneath. So let's see if that's worked. Not sure which way around these go actually. It might be that uh, we need to do it that way. Yes, I think they're a bit they're a bit wider than they are deep, so we just need to trim that a little bit until it fits. Get some finer tweezers on this job.
Yeah, so we're going to be able to push that in. Uh, I'll just have to work out what to glue it with. I think I'm going to have to use some, just a drop of PVA, just to hold it in place. But uh, that's going to work nicely, I think. That's actually in, so I'm just going to put a drop of PVA at the back of that just to hold it. Now we can uh, hopefully just bend the bases up. That just needs a bit of a touch up underneath, that'll be fine. I'm just knocking the corners off the base. Just allows it to tuck in where the legs are. So there we are, that's the four flag lockers finished and uh, ready to fit onto the ship. I'm just going to drop the signalman shelters in because they're trapped between the hack base and the superstructure. But I'm not certain of the final position so I'm just going to use some PVA which will be enough eventually to hold them but it just gives it some time to for me to get the hacks tower in position obviously I'll use some super glue for the hacks towers do the starboard side now. And again I've had to ease the bottoms of these parts because the locations on the trumpeter kit are very very tight. get the uh, starboard director on. Just make sure that's nice and square. Just want to check what spacing we've got on these. to be pretty tight up to the railing there and I just want a couple of spots of thick super glue on these parts just the tiniest dab on the feet what I can do afterwards where we've got this bit drops of super glue is just give it a very light spray with some matte varnish. That one's gone in okay. We have to use thick super glue with these parts because the contacts are so small that medium super glue just evaporates before you've uh, before you've got the part in place
So the flag lockers are in. They're going to need a little bit of touching up because I've scratched them with the tweezers. But that's not uh, a big deal. I'm just glad that they're in. Put these lamps on now. I've uh, got the conning tower platform uh, details all done now and finished the Admiral's Bridge detailing as well. So I've added the flag lockers at the back. In the end, I joined the two lockers together with a very thin strip of styrene strip underneath because I found that getting them to line up straight was very difficult when I placed them individually. Uh, and that styrene strip enabled me to just assemble the two lockers off the model, get them nice and straight and equally distanced. And then I just used the strip underneath to glue down onto the deck to get a nice firm fixing there. So I'm glad I did that. It's uh, the first couple of attempts were very difficult about getting the flag lockers uh, to fit properly. I've fitted the signals lamps here at the sides and these things here according to my plans were called sounding devices. I don't know exactly how they worked but basically they're a kind of a winch. I'm assuming there was some lead or something uh, attached to them that was winched in and out. Uh, I've got the hex directors fitted with the sights on the top. They're a really nice addition, the resin hex directors. And I've temporarily fitted, just so you can see what it looks like, I've just temporar temporarily fitted the uh, 15 inch director here on the front. I'm happy with that, so I'm now gonna get over to the bench and we'll start assembling the uh, Admiral's Bridge, which goes on top of the conning tower platform here. These are the two main parts of the Admiral's Bridge. So there's an underside, which is this one and contains uh, lots of rib detail underneath. And that fits underneath this, which is the main platform. And this contains the side uh, screens, splinter shields on the side, which need folding up. And at the front, actually, there are some slight lips that need bending forward. So we just need to work out which order to do these bends in. Um, I think what I'm going to need to do is to get a nice neat finish is to do these forward bends for this uh, slight angle lip on the edge of the splinter shields. I can do those with the Tamiya folding pliers. So they just need a very slight bend forward. I think that's all they're going to need. These shields will bend without the folding tool so actually it's easier to do the lip on the top once we've folded the screen up so if I just do one at a time and bring them slightly up that just gives me enough room to get the tool in to make the bend on the top lip So actually that angle is about right, it's not too far off at all. I'm probably going to need to make some uh, small adjustments to these uh, bend overs at the top just to get everything nice and square but we're just getting them as close as we can just at the minute. 
We'll just bend this back piece in now. The thing that will hold these uh, splinter shields together is some little brackets or fillets that go on the inside and I'm hoping that they'll be enough just to hold the part together in the correct place and what we'll end up doing I believe is using some of the Mr Surfacer just to seal any of the joints that we might be left with once we've done all the bending got uh, this curved section of the deck here so this piece here needs to be curved as well to match that radius and I'm going to do that by eye and we might have to go to uh, bend that a little bit more so now I can see the shape that I'm after I can just go in with the pliers and very gently ease that corner around we're just going to have to adjust these as we go along I think We're pretty close with that. I'm going to be interested to see if the support brackets, which are these parts here, are enough to hold all these screens in place at the correct angle. That's the bridge deck roughly bent into shape. We have two different sizes of uh, supports. The shield is slightly higher at the back here and then drops down at the front. So we have two different sizes and just need to make sure we get the right ones. I've made a start now on uh, putting the supports in for the splinter shield around the edge of the Admiral's Bridge and I found it useful to just put some tape around to hold the various sections together and also to uh, tape them flush with the bottom of the deck where they fold round and that just locates them in place where whilst I put the little fillets in here and I'm hoping that those fillets will be just enough to tack the uh, splinter shields in place around the edge. But it's important to get these fillets free of any uh, little stubs. If you leave anything on these it will prevent them se seating properly. And as we're relying on them to hold the splinter shields in place we want to make sure they're perfectly clean. The other thing with them is that obviously they are uh, square on one side and angled on the other so you just need to make sure that you've got them the right way around just to maximise the contact that you're looking for on the parts. So I'm just giving those a small dab of glue, one at, a dab at the top and also at the bottom. There are some little engraved slots on the deck which just help to locate the part. So that's in position. It's got a few more to do then we can start on the forward part of the bridge. So that's all the tall fillets in now just let me check that I've got them all in yeah 
I don't know if you can hear the rain today, it's absolutely throwing it down here. A good day to be indoors modelling. Every day is a good day to be modelling. We're going to have to be very careful with this platform. Uh, it's very, very fragile. Uh, and these parts won't stand a lot of knocking or any sort of stress on them. So we need to be very careful with it once it's done and especially once it's painted. I'm just reinforcing the base now with this super thin super glue and hopefully that will just wick into the joints and just add that tiny bit more strength. The sooner I can get a coat of primer on this the better um, because again that will add a bit more support to the parts. Okay, so I've got the taller side of the splinter shield on and I just now want to work around and get these other forward parts fitted. Now these are the ones with the slight angle on them at the top. They've just got a slight turnover which I did earlier. And as I work around, I just want to make adjustments to those turnovers just until they line up as I did before. I'm just going to run some tape around the edge just to make sure that they're all where I want them. Well, obviously I have to be careful taking that tape off. So I'm pretty happy with the positioning of that now. So we can go around and get the other smaller support pieces fitted. That's not a good start. So if you make a mistake like that uh, and get the part in the wrong place or you need to refit it, you've got to clean the old uh, super glue off. I think I've seen some people just add more glue in an attempt to get the part to fix. but. Uh, that doesn't work with super glue. It sticks to most things, but one thing that it won't stick to is super glue. So just piling more glue on just makes the problem worse. So it's best just to uh, start again, clean the part up and put it on fresh. With these smaller uh, supports, I'm just putting glue on the bottom, so some medium super glue on the bottom just to locate it. And then I've got some of the super thin, which I'm just putting on a piece of uh, plastic strip here. And I'm just running that into the part to locate it at the top as well. So this uh, super thin glue just, just wicks all the way through the joint so it, it goes all the way down to the deck and around the joint as well so hopefully that will uh, do the job. I suppose this uh, plastic strip just acts like an old quill pen used to. It does the job anyway. It does actually feel a lot stiffer 
than before so I think that might have done the job So that's the part cleaned up. And hopefully when I take the tape off, which I'm going to do very, very gently, the whole thing should hold together. So fingers crossed. I've given the uh, platform a coat of primer and hopefully that will have just sealed all the joints and all these uh, support pillars around the edge. It's still a very very fragile structure so I'm going to have to be very careful with it uh, as we go on for the uh, rest of the build. Taking a look at the Trumpeter Admiral's Bridge here and you can see the differences in the shape and it's mainly around the front section here where you can see the more subtle uh, differences. The Flange around the edge is more pronounced as well on the Pontos part. It's fairly uh, small on the Trumpeter part as well. So I'm going to move on now and do the underside, which requires the ribs to be fitted uh, underneath, the supporting ribs. And I'm going to do those before I actually glue these two sections together. So I've just used a little bit of uh, super thin super glue just to put these uh, ribs in. And I suppose the thing to be careful of is that these parts have got little notches in so that they slot into each other. Um, so obviously they've got to be the right way up so that the slots match each other as you put the cross members in. But you've also got to work out which order to put them in. So for example you could fit this piece here and then this cross member but because the slots are all on one side you then wouldn't be able to get these other ones in. So it's just a case of working out the order to do the assembly in. And I've just fitted the ones that go fore and aft here. And then hopefully I can just drop this uh, lateral part in across and make sure that the slots all line up. So I'll see if I can make that work. And I'm not going to use any glue for this. The other thing I've been careful of is not to get any glue in the slots because they're so fine that you wouldn't then be able to fit uh, the other parts. So I've struggled with that for a bit. Uh, and I've tried another method. So the old adage, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. I've started to assemble these parts off the platform uh, and that just gives you a bit more chance to line things up. You can use the grid on a cutting mat here just to see if they're square but actually the more parts you assemble they will square each other up eventually. So. I'm going to do it that way. There'll come a point where I'm going to have to put these onto the platform and fit the remaining parts as well, but at least I'll get the majority of them together. 
The thing is that the slots are so fine on these that uh, you've got to get them really close before they'll uh, join together. And doing it this way, of course, you've got to make sure that you fit in the right parts. It's uh, it's easy to get them in the wrong orientation. So that is very slightly easier building it in that way. Although, as I say, you do have to be a bit more careful about getting the right parts in the right place. I'm getting there very slowly with this. And I think I've done as much as I can now off the platform. So I'm going to have to drop it down and just tuck it into place. I'm hoping that these ribs won't interfere with the fit of this platform with the accommodation that's underneath that's already on the ship. So I'm just running a tiny bead of super thin super glue and that's just enough to tack it down. I'm not going to be using an awful lot of glue on this at all. The uh, Our favourite trick of using the primer to uh, locate the parts and seal them in, I'm hoping will come into play with this. This uh, super thin's absolutely invaluable for assemblies like this. It uh, it wicks into the joints, and it's the excess where you get the bit of excess like this. It's just easily scraped off, and it's strong enough just to hold the uh, assembly together until you can get the primer on which tends to bind the parts. I'm just going to check that for fit on top of the conning tower platform. So that's the platform underside finished with all the supporting structure on. I have to say that was quite challenging really. The fit of the cross member parts that interlink are so tight that uh, they're very difficult to locate and as you saw I had to do those uh, off the platform. Uh, it didn't work having them trying to interlink them on the platform and building it up one by one. Uh, because of the tolerances they're just too small so I found that uh, making that grid of three or four parts in the middle to get the whole structure started was the best way to, to do that. So I'm glad that's finished. I want to get a coat of primer on that now and get it fitted to the top of the conning tower platform. And that's the platform underside uh, already primed and I'm just hoping that that will now fit on the ship. These little fillets here are quite tight to the, um, it's actually the captain's cabin, cabin that sits under here. So I'm hoping that that uh, fits all right. We shall see. I've got one or two little tiny gaps around the edge of the platform here and I'm just going to run some Mr Surfacer in that joint. That's all it takes, just a very fine dab 
and it's just enough to seal the joint and again it just adds that tiny bit more strength to the whole assembly I'll just let that dry and uh, sand it down it might just need another spot here and there but uh, we'll see once it's dried so this is the Admiral's Bridge in place. I haven't glued the top part in place just yet because I want to paint the deck before I do that. And I'm then going to move on to this section which contains the chart house here at the bottom and the compass platform at the top. The Pontos set modifies these platforms quite a bit. The accommodation at the bottom, so the chart house area, is completely replaced by etched brass from the Pontos set. And this platform here is also modified an awful lot by the set. It's uh, actually, it was a two-step platform and the Pontos parts replicate that. And I'll be doing all that work in part 11 next up. Which, uh, because of Christmas, I'll post a day early on Thursday, which will be Christmas Eve. Uh, I'll be having a day off on Friday, and I hope uh, you all will as well. So that's all for part 10. I hope you enjoyed it and picked up some tips. Uh, for those of you that have got the Pontos set and are embarking on constructing this uh, model, there are some uh, pitfalls in this particular section of the build, so I hope the experience of building this is going to help you with yours. So I hope to see you back for part 11 and I hope you have a good week. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.